Hey, welcome to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Wetmore, and this is Andrew Kramer. We just got done watching the Vikings beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Florida 19-13. to The Vikings now 3-5. and five. Kind of a winnable game next week, mm-hmm. too. Might be 4-5 and five heading into the bye. Things starting to turn up. But we'll talk about all that at a later time. For now, we want to talk about this Vikings win. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, kind of that late game drive that was important for the Vikings. The defensive collapse late, mm-hmm. and it sort of had that feeling like, here we go again, uh, but then eventually Anthony Barr makes the big play in overtime to to give the Vikings the win. Andrew, first let's start with the defense because that was kind of the critical point. I thought they played very well today against a pretty bad Tampa Bay team. Uh, what was your thought, though, when they gave up that uh, scoring drive late? Oh, I did. I think one of my, my tweet was basically it is Fox re-airing the Bills game because really it was kind of <laughs> yeah. the same way it was unfolding. It started with Vincent Jackson down the seam just like Sammy Watkins last Sunday. He thought, oh, here we go again. They're probably going to end up losing this game or at least getting a field goal and sending it in overtime like they right. did. But for people that said this defense was the same as last year just because of that Bills ending, clearly – haven't been paying attention this season because Anthony Barr did what this defense has done all year that they couldn't do last year, and that's force turnovers and make plays. Now, make obviously, play. yeah. that didn't happen in the Bills game, and so that's why it was easy to write that this defense is the same as last year. Well, really, they weren't, and we wrote that for 1500ESPN.com that basically we, we realized that the personnel is different on this defense. The scheme is different, Derek, and you saw on the other side of the ball, Leslie Frazier's Tampa 2 scheme was giving up some yardage, but – an anemic Vikings offense was only able to put up uh, 10 points going forward in, in the first beginning of this game before right. they came back. Yeah, the Bucks defense was very happy to give that nine-yard check down. That, yes. You know, third and 10, uh, the Vikings were able to pick up a lot of what I would call maybe garbage yards. Uh, that's sort of the design of the scheme mm-hmm. when they're in cover two. Now, I know even in a Tampa 2 system, they're not always in the cover two, but what was your assessment of how Bridgewater played against that? He did have some time. He did have a cleaner mm-hmm. pocket. Made some throws today. Uh, still clear that there are some mistakes uh, that you're just going to have with a rookie quarterback, but what was your overall assessment of Bridgewater's day? Yeah, Bridgewater was eager, eager to point out after the game that yeah his sack numbers have gone from eight in, in his uh, start against Detroit to five against the Bills to one today. Well, that's also a product of the defenses you're playing. And this yeah. front, while they do have Gerald McCoy and they did sign Michael Johnson to a huge deal, they're not providing the kind of pressure that Detroit and Buffalo was. So Teddy, in turn, uh, obviously with an offensive line that was playing better, they were able to only limit one sack to him and he was able to stand back there. But you're still seeing the rookie accuracy and the rookie decision making. You are seeing some uh, head scratching decisions from him and some throws that are just off target where the fundamentals and the, and the mechanics of his throws just aren't there. So there are, sure. there's obviously some room to grow with him, but they're able to get the win against a despondent Tampa Bay team that was 1-5 and five going into this. So Joe Berger fills in at right guard today. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Sullivan was able to go after he cleared concussion protocol. He played center, and then Berger slid yes. over to fill in for Vlad Dukas, who wasn't able to go. Uh, what did you think of the offensive line? It didn't seem like we were able to pick on Matt Khalil quite as much today. No, they weren't. And Matt did give up a few plays here and there, but it was no more than any of his other counterparts on the line. It was just a few plays here and there, and that's kind of what's happened this season. Yeah. Now, I mean, Matt's obviously got the highest expectations of all the guys, but not one guy has been just treacherous the entire year in terms of his play or terrible in terms of his play. Joe Berger, though, I think was an upgrade at right guard. Now, some people might have thought differently, but Vlad Dacosta is a guy who, while he's got that mauler mentality, he's got 325 pounds on him. He is the heaviest guard. He was inactive today, and he really, when he was in, he wasn't the kind of guy that you needed in pass protection. I thought Joe Berger was a lot more, a uh, lot more uh, uh, consistent in that aspect sure. of it. But with the Vikings' offensive line, like I said, they were able to give Teddy some time. It's just you, you need to keep developing this and. And as we said during the game uh, on our on our Twitter accounts, they wanted to sit Teddy Bridgewater this season. That's something they wanted to do this season, but they can't. So they have to go through and they have to they have to live with the ups and downs of a rookie quarterback. And right now, you have the weapons on offense. Jarek McKinnon has yeah. developed into a great running back weapon so far. We we're kind of finding out he's not a flash in the pan. And really, this running back committee isn't a committee. And Matt Asiata has been pretty much phased out outside of third down rolls. Uh, but with Teddy, like I said, you're going to need to continue to go through those growing pains, and fortunately they were able to come out with a win for the Vikings' standpoint. They got a couple of nice plays, too, from receivers. Jarius Wright yes. makes a nice catch on the final drive, is able to strength his way out of bounds. I don't know if that's a verb, but I just oh, made it, it one. No, okay. we'll, we'll use it. Uh, Jarius Wright with a nice play. Cordero Patterson, a couple of highlight reel catches. And Greg Jennings getting involved mm-hmm. in the action. Um, and even some chase forward action yeah. over the middle. Uh 
Teddy Bridgewater got some help today, it seemed like. What did you think of the Vikings' overall offensive performance, even though they weren't able to score that many points against us? Yeah, I mean, for a, for a receiving group that led the league with 16 drops after six weeks, they have picked it up the last two weeks. I mean, Greg Jennings had that one where the ball was thrown a little high. He kind of one-handed it near the sidelines. You thought he could have caught it, but the ball was high from Bridgewater. Yeah. So there were some plays like that, another overthrow to Charles Johnson where uh, he, Charles could have stopped that route down the seam, and maybe they could have connected for a huge score there. There are still some plays where the motor, the, the Pistons aren't all clicking with this passing offense. Yeah. But you are seeing, like you said, some receivers that are coming up that the names you weren't even expecting. Charles Johnson getting a lot of snaps in that split right. end spot. So they are kind of trying to divvy up the, the the receiver snaps. Cordero Patterson gets involved with the jet sweep. So you are seeing some contributors come through, but it all starts with the quarterback yeah. and obviously all starts with the offensive line. So those for, those first two steps were good for them. They were protecting the quarterback. Now you just got to start seeing those throws connect a bit more with Bridgewater. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, final takeaway, the defensive performance, yeah. uh, final strips, fumble, touchdown <laughs> aside, easy for me to say. Mouthful, yeah. Uh, that play aside, which obviously was a huge game-breaking play and yep. won the Vikings the game, what was your? What did you think of the defensive performance against Mike Lennon and really a Tampa Bay squad that has not done that much this season? Well, no, we're seeing a defense in Mike Zimmer's that's coming together more, and they're kind of looking what looking like what Mike Zimmer wants them to look like in sure. terms of starting up front with the defense defensive line's physicality. I mean, I think four of the five sacks that they got came straight from the defensive line. Mm -hmm. Barr added that fifth one in there. But uh, basically, you're seeing it start up front where they were getting after Glennon, hitting him on throws, not letting him get comfortable back there. And Tampa Bay's, you know, kind of a, a weak offense to begin with. But if you throw it up to their receivers, they got tall targets. So we yeah. saw that happen a couple times. But Captain Munderland gets his first interception off of a jump ball against a 6 6 receiver. Imagine which is that. Yeah. A, it was impressive to see. So you're seeing these pieces come together for a, a Mike Zimmer defense that was not looking like this to start it out week one, but right. they are now. Bad ball from Glennon on that one, I think. Uh, Mike Evans yeah, and Vincent Jackson, beautiful. very physical, uh, <laughs> but still, you got to give the Vikings credit where credit yep. was due. Uh, we'll have all of this stuff on the Purple Podcast, too. If, you, if you're not uh, listening to the Purple Podcast yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> uh, some great analysis on the Vikings. Uh, Andrew Kramer and I host that twice mm -hmm. a week. We do one Wednesdays after practices, kind of previewing the game, and we'll do them Sunday here after each game to break that down. We'll talk about all that stuff and more, especially get into some Jarek McKinnon that we didn't touch too much on in this video. We'll slow so, down the bandwagon and let you jump on. <laughs> <laughs> so check the podcast. If you're watching this on 1500ESPN.com, just go up to Shows, the tab there. Scroll down to Podcasts and Purple Podcasts. We'll have all your Vikings analysis there. For Andrew Kramer, I'm Jarek Wetmore. Thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. We'll catch you next time.